Hey, everybody. Welcome to Between the Lanes. Uh, this is a podcast uh, that's based on a dialogue that we're going to have a conversation between me, Todd Lane, my dad, Tom Lane. And the goal of it, um, well, let me first say this, Dad. You know, I know we sat in, in this boardroom and we, we were brainstorming and praying about what to do next. And what we thought was, what does the world need? And then it hit us. The world needs another podcast. Is that is that what you thought too? Not exactly. <laughs> no. I thought, what are we thinking about? <laughs> aren't there enough podcasts in the world? There are there are probably enough podcasts, but we aren't on them. That's true. <laughs> so And we have a unique voice. We have a unique voice, a unique perspective. Uh and the whole goal of Between the Lanes, um, there are things that are I, if I'm just honest as a son that I, I look at and I go, I want to draw things out of you for the world to hear and know. And what a great way to do that in a podcast. And really the heart behind the podcast is, and the name of it between the lanes is not just a dialogue, but, but anybody watching, we go in and out of being a father, being a father or son, being a leader, being a follower. Uh, we're navigating all these different roles. And as we navigate these different roles, we have different uh, perspectives and ways in which the, uh, the Bible uh, general leadership principles apply to each one of those. And so we're navigating between those different lanes. So you catch the pun, right? So between the lanes, we're going to talk about all the variety of different roles, the ways in which we navigate between those things. And it'll be a dialogue between me and you. And over the course of the different episodes, uh, we're going to have guests and folks that will join us. But today, as our first uh, episode, you are joining us on our very first episode. Thank you for being a part of it. Um, and so any, any other thoughts about what Between the Lanes means to you? Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> as leaders, either you're uh, someone who's aspiring in your leadership role or you're experienced, and uh, over now more than 40 years of, of leadership in different venues, I, I know that it's a journey. Yeah. And I, I was thinking about this, and I, I actually just recently bought a, a new car. And uh, what I found is this new car comes with a feature called lane assist. Did, like, you, did you think when you were buying the car that it was referring to you? What I, what I know is if I start to veer into another lane without using a blinker, the car assumes I'm doing something by accident, and it vibrates my seat. It tells me, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yep. and it resists me a little bit. But this car has an even greater feature, and that is you can choose, and it'll keep you in the center of the lane. You can't veer to the right or to the left. Mm. And I, I was thinking, you know, in all of our leadership journeys, there are things that maybe there's something that pulls us out of the lane. So part of what we're doing, regardless of the experience level of your leadership. Mm. We're, we're desiring to give you principles, to give you a, examples and inspiration. They'll keep you like lane assist. Yeah. We're, welcome to <laughs> the lanes podcast. <laughs> Assisted by the lanes. That's right. We're going to help you uh, stay in the, in the middle of your lane if you want, or at least uh, vibrate a little bit if you're starting to leave the lane. Now, you don't, when you're driving, you don't leave the lane too much just to get a vibration sense, do you? Uh, no. Okay. Just no. making sure. No. Yeah. Uh, you were telling a story when we were just talking about your car, and you were talking about that, and the, the dealer was telling you about a situation where a guy literally fell asleep because this keep it in the center of the lane, and, and he woke up, and it saved his life uh, because it didn't allow him to veer. And it made me think about, while that's a great feature to keep you in the center of the lane, the the risk if you don't recognize that uh you you could keep it in the center of the lane you could be lulled to sleep even in your own development so i'm going to make a play on the center while that's a good good thing keeping you in the center of the lane if you don't recognize i actually veer between lanes intentionally there's times when i should be i'm in a different role i'm i'm you know i'm wearing a different hat um and if i don't <laughs> recognize that i do that then I could be lulled to sleep and it actually could be dangerous for my development. Um, I think principles are, are general and they apply across the board. Obviously the Bible 
is going to be our guide and the Bible applies and his guidance and his relevance in every area of our life. Uh, but there's times also where uh, how I apply a scripture looks different when I'm a leader than it might look when I'm a follower uh, than I, and how I might apply it when I'm a, I'm a dad uh, or when I'm acting uh, just as a citizen. You know, I think about all these different roles. And so the way that I apply that scripture looks different, though the scripture itself is not different. I, I've, I've thought about, like, for me, one of the, the sort of the baseline scripture in my life, which I think it is for everybody because it's the word of Jesus, but uh, is to do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And so what that looks like, and that's the golden rule, and I've, I've talked about that, uh, but how that looks and how I uh, do or how I treat someone uh, when I'm a leader has a different application than how I treat someone if I'm at the grocery store or whatever. It's the same principle. But my point of it is, is that as you navigate between those lanes, finding the application for Scripture is going to be really important. Yeah. And, and we realize uh, leadership, uh, there are various roles and responsibilities that we fulfill as leaders. Yeah. Sometimes people think of leadership only positionally. Well, you know, I don't have this position, therefore I must not be a leader. Right. But the reality is you're a leader in your neighborhood, you're a leader in your family, you're a leader in your organization, and there's a sphere of influence that's been established that you are exerting leadership in, whether you know it or not, and it requires you to be intentional. Yeah. And the more the the greater your your sphere of influence, the more intentional, more aware you need to be about the principles of leadership that you're expressing. So that makes me think that this this is the intention of the podcast, and uh, the podcast is let's just say brought to you by the Executive Leadership Institute. Um, and so I want to pivot real quick and talk about the Executive Leadership Institute. E L I is the acronym that uh, we'll refer to it as throughout the podcast. Uh, but what you talked about there, you know, when as we've begun to discuss and promote what E L I is about. Uh, you can it can get a little bit distracting to think of you know, executive leadership. What does executive mean? Uh, and and really, all executive mean is how how do you execute leadership principles? It's not about being an executive, although it might and it might apply to you. But all of us, if you think about what life really is about, it's about execution. If you can't execute a principle, then you're not going to get it done. So, executive leadership institute is about how do we execute leadership principles and what the Bible has to say about it. And I think about um, your point about leaders and where you are in your leadership journey. And you may go, I'm not leading anybody. Wrong. Yes, you are. You're leading yourself. Yeah. So when when I think about where you begin in developing, influencing, impacting leaders, uh, it's sort of like uh, we're, we're going to start with the foundation of your life, your leadership. And what I've done is I've gone back and identified basically six pillars that over 40, more than 40 years of leading that my leadership has been founded on. And I think of them as pillars in, from this standpoint that uh, if we're building a house or if we're living in a house, uh, if the foundation of the house is not right, mm. then the doors don't shut, the walls have cracks and and foundation repair is costly <laughs> uh, and foundation repair is costly and needed yeah and so where we where we start with every leader is to talk to them about the foundations of their life the pillars that their leadership is founded on and it impacts every area yeah yeah and so even kind of dive into that a little bit further obviously what has been highlighted in recent years and is is huge in society is mental health and, um, you know, I don't, I don't know where to go with that in terms of the Bible talking about mental health, because the Bible really talks about heart. Yeah. And I think it's probably the same thing. But if I, if I sort of take mental health and go, well, we're talking the same thing when we're talking about heart health. Um, talk a second about heart health. Yeah. I'd, even, even the way the Bible describes it, uh, guard your heart, it says, for out of it flow the issues of life. Yeah. Well, I, I equate that to the emotions of my life. So if I have anger or frustration or bitterness or judgment, those 
emotions yeah. are part of my mental health, and they affect my what what God would call my heart. Yeah. But my heart's not in a good place because I'm dealing with these issues in my life. Yeah. Uh, so yes, I think uh, can you uh, can you execute leadership and still be angry, frustrated, bitter? Yes, but it impacts the way that you lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can think of of uh, you know the the great thing about being um, a leader is that you're also a person, <laughs> and you have issues, and you have flesh that arises in you. And as as much as we're spirit led, the reality of it is we are constantly battling the issues of our flesh, and so how we cause our flesh to die daily, uh, guard our heart. There's intentionality that we have to do. You know, think about when when we pray, and the Bible talks clearly about how to pray. Jesus Jesus taught us how to pray, and we're supposed to be pray at all times. And, mm-hmm. and, and yet there's also um, things that we're supposed to do. Guarding your heart is one of those. That um, the Bible doesn't say Jesus will guard your heart. Bible says, guard your heart. Bible says, flee evil, resist temptation. So there's, there's very real personal things that we have to take action on in order to affect things of the kingdom, but it's our responsibility. Yeah. I think when I think of the responsibility or the, the purpose of leading at any level, uh, I think the the foundation, the number one pillar, is what the Bible calls calling. Mm. Uh, we might we might describe it as purpose or destiny or something along those lines that are m- m- less of a biblical term, more of a, a secular term, but it means the same thing. Mm. And uh, how important it is to understand uh, where you're going, mm. what your purpose is. Uh, I think every person, no matter who they are, even no matter what their relationship with God is, wants to know, why am I here? Yeah. What's my purpose? Yeah. And uh, understanding or discovering what that is. I'll tell you, at, at 16, uh, I made a decision to put Jesus Christ first in my life. And that meant to me to obey and to serve to him. Now, I'm trying to equate that at 16. I'm junior in high school. Uh, I'm I'm going through my high school years, about to go to college. And the question then became, what does God want me to do with my mm-hmm. life? Why did he put me here? Yeah. And I, did, I felt all the emotions. I felt that the reason I was here is uh, uh, to be an influential business leader. I was called to be an influential business leader. And from that position as a business leader, I would influence employees, I would influence community, yeah. I'd influence organization, investors, uh, I would influence. And I thought that the, the, the shortest distance between where I was, was that day, just about to graduate from high school and go to college, and the full e- experience of, of God's, my influence being what God would want it to be would be my destiny, and it was going to be a straight line. So I went to college, majored in accounting. Yeah. Uh, I went to work for an organization that was uh, a wholesale paper distribution company, and I began learning the skills of leading that organization at, at various ways, being exposed. And so, so, so let me just get this right. So you went to college and got a degree in accounting. Yeah. So are you an accountant today? No. Wow. What? <laughs> what? You mean what you did writing co- is not what you ended up doing your whole life. Okay. So so then you went to uh, work at a paper company. Yep. And you were a sales guy. I was a merchandise manager first. Oh, ooh, that sounds fancy. Yeah. Merchandise I, manager. I, How I many people bought, did you manage? I bought the <laughs> the the materials okay. that we sold in our organization. Okay. And, and then I moved from there into the sales side. So I had an understanding of what it takes to buy what we yeah. what we sold. Yeah. And then I had an understanding of relating to the customers and uh, offering the products that we yeah. 
inventory. So, 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 so you went to be an accountant, but you're not an accountant today. You were, you were a merchandising manager, but today are you merchandising? No. Well, <laughs> with maybe. Every, everything in life has a certain degree of merchandise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair, fair yeah. point. Uh, and then you went to, and that taught you things. So you went to sales and are you still selling today? No, <laughs> no, okay. that's the point. It, it's a zigzag, yeah. you know, rather than a straight line uh, to your destination. Uh, the most shocking things in life are when what you expected and you, if you're a believer, you, you put God's name on it. Yeah. Said, I think God wants me to do this and it's only for a season. Right. And then he moves you to another place. Every assignment in God has experiences and tests, mm. and uh, they're a part of God's training to ultimately lead you to his destination for your life. Mm. And as, as long as you're gaining experience, there were many times I thought, how is this going to get me to the place that I think God wants me to be? Yeah. And uh, I, the only thing I knew for sure was do your best apply yourself, learn everything you can. That's the, that's some of my father wisdom that my dad gave me. Hey, I asked him one day, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys in your organization, the organization that you now own, that were that grew up with you but they didn't they didn't experience what you've experienced. Why is that? Oh. And he said, "Well, I can't speak for them, but I can tell you what I did. Every assignment that I had I applied myself diligently. I learned everything I could, even if I didn't think it applied to where I was going, because I knew that whatever I learned, I'd take with me to the next place. Yeah. I mean, that principle, so you talked about being saved at 16. So I'm thinking maybe we have a 16-year-old watching. Uh, maybe there's a 26-year-old, maybe a 36-year-old, maybe a 46-year-old who, at whatever stage they're in, you're going, how is what I'm doing fulfilling God's purpose in my life? Or at 16, like, I don't understand the purpose of taking calculus. <laughs> you know, I, was, I, I saw a, a podcast the other day, this guy was talking about, and he was making the point to go, the purpose of things like calculus and physics, whether you take them in high school or college, is not necessarily, now you may become a f physicist and you need to know <laughs> physics, but the point of those things isn't necessarily that you're trying to learn them specifically, but it trains your mind how to learn. Yeah. It trains your mind how to learn new things and then be able to apply those things. And so at 16, if you get too caught up in the, what in the world purpose does this have or will it have in my future? You're missing the point. It's teaching you how to learn. And then at 26, if you think, man, I went to school to become a, 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 a financial analyst or I went to school to become a, an accountant and I'm not doing, doing that today, then you're absolutely missing the point of what God may be doing in this season. And there's two things that I was thinking about that you imparted as a as a father, and you you still do as a leader. Uh, one has to do with influence. So I want you to give your statement about influence, and then the other one is about uh, transfer, and and how whatever we're doing, how it transfers. So comment on both those. Okay, so probably the most uh, common statement that I made to you and your siblings uh, when you were growing up uh, had to do with influence. I I want to live my life to be the greatest influence I can be for God in every arena of my life. Uh, it didn't, didn't matter if it's only among church friends or in a church setting or if it's in a business setting. I want to be an influence, and I wanted you to be an influence and learn that principle as you, as you grew through every stage of development in your life. So I would say to you kids, you're getting ready to go with friends someplace, I'd say, remember, you're an influence or you're being influenced. Mm. You be the influence. And uh, just uh, just a reminder. Yeah. And we actually, when we were, when you were at an age when we determined the friends that you could, you know, hang out with, we measured it on that. If when you were with a certain friend or any of your siblings and that, inf that friend influenced you in a bad way and you couldn't turn the tide, yeah. you were impacted then we limited or eliminated their ability to impact your life. Yeah. Because influence matters. So that was this, you're, remember, you're either an influencer or being influenced. So today, I would say to somebody watching this podcast, you're either an influence 
or you're being influenced. What are you today? Mm. What are uh, the relationships that you're involved in? Are you impacting them or are they impacting you? And if they're impacting you, that, that could be a positive thing. But if it's not, eliminate the, the influence that's leading you in a wrong direction. That's great. That's, I do remember you said that. And I, I think maybe like a good, a good hitter in baseball, I was, I was batting about 300 on that. <laughs> I'd like to think I was being a great influence. Probably oftentimes I was being influenced. But what I would say is you constantly casting that vision for me allowed my perspective to always be, I want to be the influence. And though I wasn't perfect and nobody is, uh, and you may be walking out in your life and going, I'm trying to be an influence, but I know I, I stumbled in this day or I didn't get it right in this day. Don't be discouraged. Lift your head up. Start the day new and go, I'm going to be an influence today. Um, so, all right, talk about the issue of transference. Yeah, so the, the issue of transference, it's a, it's a principle that sort of runs through the, the Bible as you, as you read it and try and apply it. And basically, it, it simply is this. You can only impact to the degree that you own a situation or a principle. Uh, another way to say this is uh, it, it will, you will not influence your kids by telling them, don't do as I do, do as I say. Hmm. You have to own it for yourself before it will transfer. That's the principle of transference. So if you want to transfer something, the reason we contend for the character, integrity, the values of our life is so that we have authority to be able to say, hey, follow me. Yeah. I'll, I know how difficult it is, whatever it might be, yeah. to, to live a, a life of integrity, a, li a life of honor. I know wh what, how difficult it is to find time to really try and understand God's connection or command to, to have a consistent time with God. I know how difficult that is. Mm. So today, being our first podcast, we're, we're talking about a lot of vision uh, of, of both ELI, what we want this podcast to be, and, and really what kind of comes out of you. Uh, you know, if I, uh, what, I want to talk a little bit about the, the genesis of the Executive Leadership Institute, because this is what you're going to get throughout this podcast, between the lanes, a dialogue between us. And really what I, uh, what I felt whenever God began to speak about ELI was I knew you as a leader who, uh, had, had a part in birthing and growing two mega churches and coming alongside, uh, two, uh, very, uh, equipped and strong visionary leaders and helping to grow those churches to become what they what they became. And, and so drawing those things out, uh, of you is going to be very easy to do because all you got to do is kind of push on you and, and it's going to come out. And so that's what this podcast is going to be. We're, we're going to cover, you know, the topics you've already talked about. We're going to go in depth in those. Uh, and, and the real purpose of it is to help, help you, uh, be a part of this conversation. So we, we want to hear from you, make comments, ask questions. We want to cover questions that you might have uh, specifically about a topic we're talking about today, or your question may lead us to a topic in the future. Um, and, uh, and it's going to be a, a fun, fun way to, uh, to get some of those messages out. We're going to kind of start towards a, a wind down of today's podcast. Uh, and can I say one thing? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of running the mic at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Go, go. Well, I, I just think sometimes when it, our, uh, person may tune into this and go, yeah, yeah, I, I thought I was going to learn what executive leading is or how to do it. And I think certainly we'll impart what we've learned on our journeys. Yeah. You, you're you a leader in your own right, and you have lots of experience at high-level leading that uh, that is worthy to be shared. But the, the reality is when what I think is missing in all the leadership uh, training that's available is why mm. it's the it's the foundation that is, that's behind what we do it's why we do it yeah and so 
if we, to the degree that we can connect principles and values and uh, our our behavior uh, to the real reason behind it, I think will actually impact leaders in a in a deep and profound way. Amen. Amen. So, um, one of the the sort of the overarching scripture that that we have talking about the ELI. Uh, is Psalm seventy eight seventy two, and it says that David shepherded them with the integrity of his heart and the skillfulness of his hand. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think about leadership, and it's not a stretch to say leadership is shepherding. And so, if if we are going to be shepherding people, there's a way in which we do that that is uh, both skill and acumen. That's a part of it, and the integrity of our heart, which speaks to maybe the dynamic that you're talking about. How do I as a how do I as a leader bring my heart into this that that expresses the why behind why I'm leading? And the acumen is important, but the heart is equally as important. Completely. If you're a a task driven leader, then all you're interested in, in is producing results yeah. regardless of the influence that producing those results has. Yeah. And what what I'm saying, what I believe, and what I've tried to demonstrate through my years of leading is, it, it's more than task. Yeah, it's yep. a it's an expression of the essence of who you are in, in leading. It's your heart. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, let's wrap this up uh, and and do this with a prayer. Watch you pray for uh, for folks who are watching uh, who are capturing the vision of what we're talking about today. Uh, pray for them. And, and I just want to say thank you for joining us on our first episode. Uh, we got lots more to come. It's going to be fun having you to, uh, on the ride with us. Why don't you pray us out? Sure. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for every leader uh, that is joining us, every individual that you uh, brought along our way. And I'm asking you, God, to expand their understanding of what leadership is, that you would enable them to be the influence that you've called them to be and to fulfill the role that you have for them in leading, in their home, in their marriage, in their neighborhood, and in their business or the ministry that they are involved in. I pray your blessing over them today. In Jesus' name, amen.